Thanks. Yeah, so sorry about if that. If you can elaborate a little bit more uh, on your role, and of course the talk is going to be on the uh, the Shogun machine learning library. Uh, hey everybody, kudos like, that you didn't go to lunch, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, I hate mics, I might take it off and I'll shout because I usually shout, so I'm Victor, I'm a core developer of Shogun, and yeah, I wish that this would be my full-time job, no, this is my hobby, I started this with my PhD studies and I have never stopped since, uh, but yeah, I work as a data scientist for a startup, so, but yeah, this is just a hobby and we're trying to keep up the spirit with open source and, and, and the library itself. So let's talk a little bit about like what Shogun is, not about me, not too much interest in there. Uh, and then I'll try to go into all the aspects and like, please, if you have any questions, like do, because other than that, I will keep just talking about things. And yes, I'm very hectic, so I do these kind of talks. That doesn't make too much sense to anybody else. Uh, so, yeah, let's go in, into it. So it's a unified, efficient uh, machine learning library. Terms and conditions may apply in uh, any of these statements. Uh, so we are around since 1999, which is like nobody knows us. Like nobody literally uses us or knows us. Joke, there's some usage of this. Maybe we are out of university, so all of our current contributors, previous contributors, and the two guys who started it actually the name, everybody asks why Shogun, is it because it started by Surin and Gunnar? Shogun, okay. So it has nothing to do with any Japanese roots there. They are both from Germany and Tübingen, so that's where they started. It was like bioinformatics in specialty in gene applications and mining. Uh, so they developed a lot of their stuff there. And then, but it is a full C++ library. And I'll go into more like what is it for? It's like a, a, we have a wide ra range of, of uh, models. The problem lately is that we have so many models that we can't keep up the maintenance of it. So sometimes we just throw out some stuff because it's just we can't maintain it because the, the, the contributor was just lost and we don't know what's the code doing anymore. We changed so much stuff that like we don't know what's happening, but we still like have unit that's going on, so actually it's it's predictable what it does, so it's not that bad. So it's for hackers because it's all written in C++ with some unified uh, interfaces. So I'll go in later on, like, we don't care what you like. Like, if you like C, R, Python, it's all good for us. We love it, all of them. Uh, for scientists, as I said, like, all of us are doing this as, as a current two contributors. We're actually running one of them, me, Heiko, is at the UCL in, in University College London. Both of us did our, doing our PhD during this time, and that's how we ended up doing uh, Shogun at all. And then it's for ideals because like, it's a GPL3. Because of that, many of us, many of the possible applications in the field of, of uh, industry is not happening because we are GPL3. Yeah. Uh, most of them all go with Apache 2.0 or BSD license. We assume to have something like that, but that's that's a complicated matter. So we are running, because we are in C++, we are running on Linux in any of the distributions you would wish. Of course, OS X, Windows lately, thanks God for Microsoft starting on doing open source things, and they are starting, like, the compiler start to be accepting, like, standards in C++. Kudos to that. FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and of course your toaster as well. Whatever you want, we run on it. Like yesterday, I heard the, the talk about TensorFlow. They're like that. Yeah, they run on on on. When somebody's running them on Raspberry Pi. Yeah, we that we did that like six years ago. Uh, uh, we have like a full Fedora support, meaning like we are compiled pre-compiled packages for any architecture you name it, meaning MIPS, ARM. ARM 7, ARM 8, ARM 64, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, but what is it? Like, really, like, it's a bunch of comments. Like, we have, like, more than 15,000 comments over there. Uh, a lot of lines of code. Like, as I said, like, we had to, like, this happened, this jump back on the lines of code happened in October when we threw out a lot of things. We didn't thought that any use of it and many contributors. We run many, many uh, for the last seven years, we ran Google Summer of Code that boosts our contribution mostly. And if anybody happened to be here, a student, please come and fetch me. I'm more than would be happy to mentor somebody. I'm usually mentoring like five students a year. Uh, there was one year when we missed, missed uh, Google Summer of Code. 
or something. Um, so yeah, like let's go into a little bit about this whole unified interface and, and, and all about like this religion of, especially in data scientists, I believe that what I see is that everybody's like R, Python, R, Python. And that's happening like constantly, and then like you show me on a Python code, no, that's horrible. Yeah, no. Uh, so like this is just ranking or random job description, of, like what what people like tend to use or want to use. Of course, this is like the overlap. I don't know how correct is it, but I try to be researching in this area to be a bit a bit correct about this. But this seems to be a nice partitioning about the people what they capable of or want to program in. Uh, don't get me wrong, we can go into this discussion like what is, I think like I might have offended somebody a week ago about these comments and I'm sorry I don't meant to do that. So like, like if we can start discussing like what is wrong with them, like Python is like it's an object with a hash map, thank you, what the hell, sorry. Uh, R, I, I, for me the, 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 the whole thing of, of R syntax is, 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 is horrendous, Java, anybody use Java in production. Yeah, it's 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 sometimes it's it's a hassle, uh, especially with GCC and C plus plus. It's just because of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you know what that means, it's cool. If you don't, and then as well, I think you you miss some not so interesting stuff. Anyhow, like uh, yeah, the my problem is usually that like what I see Nate lately that uh, everybody's developing like or testing. Like I love Python as well. Don't get me wrong. In the sense of like testing ideas quickly. To have like see the, how it performs, like the idea. But the problem is that from that moment on, that you decide that it's it's good, and you want to bring it in production, that's a problem. Because your Python code is is, I mean, Python is. I still believe, and I can have a huge hours discussion about this. I believe that it's not meant for for production. It's just not. It's a dynamic type language. If you put it with the people developing 50 over that, anything can come in, and anything can go back. <laughs> And then I know about these traits, like that then you start typing the language and then you are like, but then why do you do this? Like why do you use this language if it's already typed? And yeah, and it's very slow. Like it's it's for me it's like super slow. Like I can do conversion with MATLAB. MATLAB, I mean that's that's not a hard performance thing, and it's like in the same ballpark. Anyhow, like I love it, but then you have the problem of, of deployment, right? And then running in production and then having it pass. And that's what we try to do. So Shogun interfaces for everybody. Like we don't mind. Like we, we want every every interface possible there. So the currently we support Python obviously, R, Lua, Ruby, JVM, meaning Java or anything like running in JVM, C sharp, Octave, if anybody uses Octave, I don't know. But it's it's a nice project actually. And currently uh, we, I'm working actually on this the JavaScript support. So the way we, we are capable of doing this is that we are written in C++ and there's some very nice library called Suite and Suite helps us auto generate all the interfaces. So I'll try to show you some like what happens here. Can you see this or should I zoom in better? Okay. So like this is our website about like snippets of like what can you do for us with, with us like what are the what what are the different models you can use, like machine learning models. This is by far not the, not all, all of them. It's just that we didn't have time to port all of them into this uh, example page. But as you can see here, like you say, like you like random forest and you want to use it in Shogun. Then like, as you can see here is the listing, like what, what is the input? You say like it's a classification, so it's a majority vote, right? And then it's a random forest and so forth and so on. Currently it's in Python, but you can, as you can see, you just shift to Octave, Java, Ruby, C++. And as you can see, like the, the most of the time, like not most of the, all of the time, the, the actual function names are not changing, right? So if you once get the hold of it, of Shogun, like the, the, the way our API is working, you can just keep on like back and forth switching between languages. And, and yeah, again, all of them is running under the hood in C++. You're just having an interface, like TensorFlow does this as well. Actually, TensorFlow uses this way as well. Uh, so back back to the story about interfaces is that, yeah, like, like the only thing I don't understand is like 
by far today why JavaScript is not being used so much more by data scientists. I know that there's no tools for it, but the speed of it is like significantly better than any of those dynamic type languages. So I, 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 that's why we actually tried to go in there. Because, and then like if anybody's from here from Mozilla, it's like WebAssembly is something that you should check out because it's something really new and really nice. So yeah, but we have this huge problem of, of because of the fact, like currently we have students coming in that like trying to get in to Google Summer of Code, and, but every year this is keep ha kept happening. People come in, try to use the library, and there this, this huge chunk of C++ code, and like we didn't have pre-compiled stuff usually on Debian or, or Red Hat, only on Fedora. Of course, like the core developers always knew how to compile it, but then people came in like, yeah, but uh, it just doesn't work, you know, like this typical thing, people come to the IRC channel and they just like, this does not work, and this, it's a complete pile of whatever, and you're like, oh yeah, that guy worked on this like years. And anyhow, like, we, we, we just let's realize that there's this huge gap that like people like to get into the project is, 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 is really very frightening. So we started to think about like what did we do about it, and currently we have like a, a showcase of iPython notebooks where it's it's all, all about like education in machine learning. So this is what we started. Like last week we had a course at UCL at my Heiko. He, he was running a graduate student course in a lab of about thirty people to have introduction in uh, machine learning. So all, each year when we do a certain uh, okay. So each year we do a certain uh, uh, Google Summer of Code, then we run actually, like everybody has to, to make an IPython notebook. And it's all about like explaining different aspects of the, the model itself, as well as the, the uh, do a presentation of it. So this is one of my favorite ones. It has been written a long time ago. It's like <coughs> independent components and uh, component analysis. Like if you have two different signals coming in regarding like sound, even videos or whatever, you can actually like divide them back and, and, and get the information you want. And the demo was done by like this. I don't know if you can hear it, but so this is all about, can you hear me still? It, all about uh, water sound. And what you see is that you have the input. Commander. Okay. Good day, Commander. You can't hear it, right? Okay, so you have that. And then you have the other one. You want a piece of me, boy? Anybody start to act? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the third one. And you take take these three signals, right? And then you do a mix matrix here, and then you can use it to mix them up together. So this is like the mix signal, right? And uh, you can do various mixtures of it, and then you can here create like the input mix signals, right? Take it as a, a simple feature set, like of doubles. And then you, you train J, like it's a independent component analysis, it will give you the estimated mixing matrix. And then basically if you apply this estimated mixing matrix in your input vector of the of the sound, you will, you should be able to get back the original sound. You want a piece of me, boy? You want a and Good day, Commander. This is actually Good day. the original sound that you got back from mixing with the mixer. Uh, the only thing I want to say here is that whatever I, ever we did here, there's many, many notebooks there. So uh, this is now available online. So thanks to AWS, they give us significant amount of, of credit. Uh, you can go to Cloud Shogun ML right now. Just use your GitHub account, and you will have all the notebooks available for you for free. And you can run it, and you can use Shogun. Or I mean, that's actually like a. a a simple Jupyter notebook, and there are all the demos, all the data for you, but it's a sci-fi stack, so you can use other libraries as well. It's for free for the time being until we have support from AWS for that. And yeah, so this is, with this we are hoping that there is a, there's a shorter acceptance in the, like getting into the project. Two things, when first time you log in, there's a marathon because we use DCOS, don't worry. 60 seconds you will need to get in the first time. Everything is persisted so you can get your data in and out. And use please the Python 2 kernel because I actually only use the Python 2 mod uh, interface, not the three ones. And then there's applications in the real world. There's like one thing that, uh, I did this my PhD about this, like organ segmentation. 
uh, you can read about it, and then it's it's all about like how a structured output prediction, which is all implemented in Shogun, uh, to to detect first the organ and then later on do segmentation based on lung based uh, part based lung detection. And there's one like these are the results, not so important. There's one very important like the anything about the kernel two sample testing, which Heiko is doing. It's very interesting because. What what is it's all about? It, like let's say you have like uh, two data sources uh, of different type, but, but like different. These are the two different uh, probability distributions that you're following, and you want to be able to find a way to distinguish them. Like when the next uh, data, like you don't know, it's marked. What what's the type of this probability distribution is it coming from? You should be able to tell it, and then you can learn this. And like we did, a, they did a paper on this. This was our first run time, as you can see. This was really bad, and this, uh, and then, then with the new version, we actually down like, like actually like 10% of the runtime, and then like we made it like threading as well, and all the paper is like this is going to be appearing at, at ICLR, and oh, the, there's a notebook about this you can read about as well. Uh, one more minute, just that uh, summer of code acceptance organization. We are like three months of open source hacking. It's really nice. I did this twice in my life. Um, you get like five, five and a half k, I think. Uh, project ideas are all listed, but of course come with, with with your own ideas. April fourth is the deadline, and send PRs today, please. Thank you. If you have any questions, please. please. I have actually two questions for you. Yeah. First off, could you elaborate briefly on any parallelization that's done in, in the code, say for like random forest? Uh, yeah. Secondly, as you know, Julia is becoming a pretty hot yeah. language for data scientists. Do you have Julia wrapper in? The so okay, world? like the, like first of all, Julia. Like officially, I am not allowed to say anything about this, but like uh, we are actually being accepted this week to be the part of Noom Focus. It's an organization where Julia, for example, resides. So, and I, we met them last year in Mentor Summit. So actually, we are working on that. For me, it's not so much interest, but some other people, yeah. So we have Julia works on, on, on getting integrated with that. Uh, second, parallelization. Uh, so we currently work on a huge rebase of, of all our linear algebra uh, implementation. A girl from uh, from New York, she did like amazing <coughs> stuff in Google Summer of Code. Uh, we fully support now, like, uh, we are using OpenMP if you are running on CPU, but you can dynamically switch between GPU and CPU. So you basically can run whatever and then just switch to a GPU and run the same thing on it and back and forth. So that's very, and it's runtime. So it's not compile time, it's runtime. And now that like TensorFlow came out with XLA, we are just going to add that support as well. And that's cool. <laughs>